Welcome back everybody. This is Sith Lord 7. Today we're going to be discussing Darth Vader's armor or his suit, whichever you all call it. Now, I'm going to be listing off 15 different things about his suit that I find very interesting. Some people might think they're disturbing, gross, or just, you know, uh, downright terrible for a human being to have to endure all the time. Now, Darth Vader's suit is a complex blend of biomechanics technology and ancient Sith magic. It serves as both a life support system and a suit of armor to protect the amalgamation of organic flesh, mechanical limbs, and synthetic organs beneath it. More than a means of keeping the Dark Lord of the Sith alive, it offers a means to intimidate and install fear in his adversaries, while allowing him to withstand their attacks should they be foolish enough to make them. When Obi-Wan faced his apprentice for the last time on Mustafar, he couldn't have known that their duel would end up with Anakin Skywalker being killed and Darth Vader rising from the ashes. I highly doubt anybody's seen, you know, anybody's seen that coming, but there was hints from the very beginning. The mobile support system made for him by the Emperor's emergency medical droids would be both his savior and his prison, as impressive as Vader's suit is and the legacy that it shrouds. Behind the scenes is far more gross than grand. He doesn't really get to take it off, and if he does, he'll pretty much die. And he gets nutrition and expels waste the same way. Not to mention the flesh rots from time to time, so it's, that's pretty nasty. And let's get right into it right now. Now, number 15 is machine parts, you know, flesh stumps, and skin grafts. That just sounds amazing. Now, Darth Vader's suit is pretty much like a Frankenstein of, you know, alloys, metals, and biotechnology devices that encases a feeble series of stumped appendages and some truly ravaged organs. After the fight between Anakin Skywalker and his former master Obi-Wan left Vader, you know, devoid of two legs and an arm, the suit had to function as both a life support system and a prosthetic, you know, limbs basically. Many of his bones were replaced with Durasteel mechanical prosthetics created to attach to the flesh stumps and skin grass, but on the ends of his appendages to literally, you know, flesh them out is his gauntlets and boots. His lungs were charred, when, you know, his retina so scarred, and his face was this so deformed he would forever need a mask to breathe and speak properly. Implanted in his chest is an enunciator linked to a processor that allows damaged vocal cords to produce speech. Number 14. He ingests his nutrients and expels them the exact same way. So, oh boy, that is sounds for a magnificent morning. Now, while tiny needles were continuously piercing his flesh to collect diagnostic data and play out the, you know, sadistic fantasies of Emperor Palpatine, they were also being used to nourish him. Well, technically he couldn't chew. He had to be in a, you know, hyperbolic type chamber to be able to take his mask off and expose his mouth. So it was easier to just have vitamins pumped into him. Now relying on a diet that contains, you know, very little of it to any solid foods meant that all waste products could be just as easily pumped out of him. Through an intricate series of pouches, tubes, and catheters, the complex ingestion and waste management system was never discussed by anyone, and he preferred to have the general public wonder if he sustained himself with the power of the force. Now, number 13. He would die within minutes, you know, without it at all. Since his suit acts as both a life support system and a, you know, prosthetic housing device, he would die without its functioning. The suit is wired with sensors that connect to diagnostic systems all over his body to monitor his, you know, respiratory, his pulmonary, and neural interfaces. This information is sent to his central chest box, which can be used to manually control a variety of other functions within the suit such as auditory systems, temperature, and ventilation. Now, the chest box computer, along with the rest of his life support systems, were designed to run for weeks at a time, but before his monthly checkups, he can recharge his suit with the access ports behind his chest box. Though updated versions of his suit does exist, the process of exchanging one suit for another would need him to be disconnected from every system including his prosthetic limbs and most likely would result in his death. Number 12. His boots keep him from constantly tipping over. 
Now, due to the fact that Vader lost his lower limbs in the battle with Obi-Wan, he had to have mechanical prosthetics surgically attached that interface with the remaining nerve endings in his little, his little stumps. Now, these mechanical legs have servo motors in them that respond to conscious thoughts modeled after the human form and are fully articulated. The pistons in them use hydraulic fluid to function, which needs to be replenished when they are, you know, have been pretty much worn out over the, over the course of a few months. Now, though, durasteel steel alloy shanks were added to his prosthetic legs to keep them from buckling under the weight of his armor. It's his magnetized boots that keep his feet firmly on the ground and from tipping over. They're the reason he doesn't blow out the window along with Luke Skywalker during their duel in Cloud City. Number 11. It prevents his eyes from exploding in space. Now what this means is the pressurized seal on Vader's helmet has the integrity of a Class C spacesuit and his boot soles have ferromagnetic cores to generate a magnetic field similar to a zero-g spacesuit which lets him cling to a starship hull. Meanwhile, he has emergency independent oxygen systems he can initiate at any time. All of this allowed him to survive the vacuum of space before he boarded the, the Tantive spaceship at the start of A New Hope. Now number 10, it's protected by mystical Sith spells. Now when I, when I read this, when I had done some you know research on this one, it was pretty interesting I guess. But when the Sith ranks were full of imposing warriors clad in powerful Sith armor, Jedi found their match in pure evil. Like the ancient Sith warriors of long ago, Vader's suit is patterned along their intimidating visage. Made of a combination of alloys, including you know, Duras steel and obsidian, its surface are imbued with the alchemy of the dark side, a method used by Sith priests to enchant Sith weaponry and make it you know, virtually indestructible. And number nine, he does not really change his suit at all. Due you know, to the sensitivity of the internal structure elements of the suit, as well as the delicate sensor arrays and mechanical components, he could never change his suit or he would risk death like stated before. Therefore, due to the life-threatening nature of such an endeavor, he has to constantly update his suit instead of changing it. This means monthly you know, checkups for the more delicate technology aspects like you know, system diagnostics. Now, some of the things you know he can change, like I had you know looked it up and stuff like that. It has like you know, his shoulder pads and this, you know, simple things like that. Now, number eight, it has to be constantly cleaned. In order to optimize the efficiency of any high-functioning piece of machinery, it has to be well maintained and cleaned with regularity. In order to not smell like the inside of a hut's ass, this has to be done constantly, since Vader cannot remove his suit without great risk to his already you know, diminished health. He has to subject himself to a series of monthly checkups where not only are diagnostics run on you know all of his internal systems, but he goes to what amounts to a Sith car wash and a fine tune-up. Now, number seven, which is pretty gross, it feeds him food paste through a tube in his helmet. So, that just sounds lovely. It's been decades since Lord Vader had, you know, could even consume a fine, delicate steak. His systems run purely on a steady fuel of, you know, dark side rage and a RepMed Vita paste. To access the meal substitute, which supposedly tastes disgusting, all he needs to do is slurp on the feeding straws that are inside the grills of his face mask. So, mm mm mm, that just sounds yummy. For Vader, though, it's much more satisfying to know that people consider him an, you know, a tank of a machine that doesn't really need real food to survive. So, beyond the petty yearning for oral, you know, satisfaction is the fact that real food no longer really interests him. Number six, it reinforces his metal skeleton. Due to the extent of his excretion and injuries at the hands of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Vader's nervous system and skeleton needed to be, you know, not just repaired, but in some cases completely replaced with new parts. This included things like his sternum, which became a perforated metal plate to accommodate cables that ran to his chest computer box. The right shoulder joint is also a prosthetic replacement, and any remaining organic bones were reinforced with special mineral solutions dripped in his nutrient feeds. It actually contains a cartridge which pain lessening solutions can be placed, but this has little effect. In essence, Vader has fused with his suit in certain new capacities, and it is as much as part of him as he is a part of it. 
Number five, it reinforces his incomplete spine. Now, after his injuries, of course, his spine was not sufficiently strong enough to you know, withstand the project weight of his brand new armor, as well as prosthetic and mechanical parts. This meant that the first vertebrate of his neck wasn't organic, and the electrocute studded collar used to support his helmet also protected it. With the artificial cybernetic vertebrae from the first to the fourth, his spine was structurally sound enough to handle the aspects of the suit that would cause him the most strain out of everything. Without the aid of the helmet, the hermetic color, and the artificial vertebrae they help support, he would have had to operate using only alternative option like a, you know, a hover chair, which would have drastically altered our perception of this Dark Lord. Number four, it keeps his lungs from rotting. As discussed before, where he has you know, ingested so much vapor, they pretty much burnt his lungs up to a crisp. You know, and since you know, Mustafar is a planet flowing with lava rivers, incredibly hot coal shoal gases, you know, rise from the surface. And, you know, after Obi Wan had severed all of his limbs and everything, you know, Anakin was pretty much just a torso rolling around on the ground. You know, his lungs inhaled dangerous amounts of them. His lungs were pretty much, you know, dead, and the pathways was so constricted. This meant emergency medical droids had to repair what they could and install an iron lung in a flat backpack concealed by his cape connected to air regulation systems in his helmet. An air pump in the top of Vader's mask as well as a interesting ventilator gives his breathing the distinctive rasp. The emergency medical droids also implanted an enunciator that enables his vocal cords to work and simulate a deep baritone voice which is nothing but a whisper within his mask. Number three, it's literally always stabbing him all the time. It is any wonder why the Dark Sith Lord is always pissed off and so powerful. You know, yes, he rages over being responsible for the death of his wife, and he believes, you know, children, but there are forces at work within his suit that assist in this prenuptial bad mood. His helmet, with an intimidating skull-like addition, protects his face as well as sticks needles into his skin to feed his central chest computer with neurological data on his brainwave activity. All along his body are a series of tiny needles that poke and prod at him to collect diagnostic data that was stored in a permanent archive. Vader was told by the Emperor that the needles contained some form of chemical that would lessen his perception of pain. They were purely placebo in effect though and only served to further infuriate the Dark Lord. Number two, it houses his organic implants. Along with various vertebrae in his spine being replaced with cybernetic implants, part of his rib cage was also removed to house replacement organs. The plastoid you know, girdle that goes around his abdominal area protects the synthetic organs from any other upcoming blunt force trauma that may be coming his way. Now the least amount of damage happened to his nervous system, but he has implanted sensory webs that send feedback data from his organ activity as well as his spinal cord and motor neurons that are constantly being monitored. His synthetic organs operate much more efficiently than the organic counterparts, even if they are only processing Vitapaste. Now the best part of this is, if one isn't working optimally, he can just get them replaced without waiting for any sort of, you know, matching donor, so you don't have to contribute your kidneys to Darth Vader at all. Now number one, the synthetic skin has to be scrubbed of necrotic flesh. I know what you're thinking. Chop that up, throw it on a salad, my boys. Now, when the emergency medical droids began the eight hour surgery that would kill Anakin Skywalker and see him reborn as Darth Vader, complications arose. A DD 13 HK droid oversaw his cybernetic implant installation, while an FX 6 performed blood transfusions and did what they could for Vader's eyes, vocal cords, his scalp, face, legs, and so on and so on. Now what took the most time was connecting his severed nerve endings to his new cybernetic limbs and the use of synthetic skin over certain parts of them. Now while synth skin is great for fleshing out limbs, you know, filling out gauntlets and making your Terminator looking exoskeleton look vaguely humanoid, it also has a tendency to rot if it doesn't bond well to the other organic flesh around it. This was a problem in the early years when Vader's synth skin had to be scrubbed of the dead flesh that would accumulate where real flesh met the synthetic. Oh boy everybody. 
this was just some interesting facts that most people might not know about Darth Vader's suit. So pretty much, he has to have it. Because if, you know, when you've seen at the end of the, you know, the Star Wars and Revenge of the Sith, you know, the one from back in the day, once Vader took off his helmet, it kind of was a matter of time. But then people might speculate it's because he was all of his, you know, basically all of his mechanical parts had gotten kind of fried from the force lightning. So I'd say it was a mix between taking his helmet off and the force lightning that done him in. I mean, he needed his suit to live. And I'd say he was always just so angry because he had to wear the suit. And just the complications and everything like that probably got to him. But all in all, man, it's Darth Vader is pretty iconic. If you don't know who he is, you've been living under a rock your whole life. But my friends, my name is Sith Lord Seven. This was just 15, you know, interesting things about Darth Vader's suit that you might not know. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like. It means a lot. Thank you, and I will see you later.